Hi. Yeah. Weekends here. Posts in Graph High, we're all sitting around, lots of energy. And the thing to do is make a movie, be in that film and video show, but not a movie. The idea that um, you can create a virtual sculpture is a real nice one as an antithesis to a movie, which is like, it goes right where you put it, and that's the only experience that the viewer gets at all. So um, to play with an interactive medium is, is pretty obvious that you want to involve the user intimately with the imagery, and that, that seems pretty, pretty plat patently obvious. So with real-time graphics technology, what would you do that's elemental enough and playful enough that you could go with it? And that's kind of what led us in the direction of uh, a room full of virtual imagery that you could experience uh, by walking into it and interfacing uh, through a monitor uh, that you could uh, direct your gaze around the space. So I guess that's the essence of the, uh, the plasm chasm. We've been playing around with some of these ideas for, I guess, seven or eight years now. Um, kind of in advance of particle systems, we've been do doing some thinking with small atomic LISP objects interacting uh, in a graphical environment and uh, had some fun with a a fairly batch-oriented approach to how you would make uh, an evolutionary uh, display that wouldn't be completely predicted by the program uh, in advance. And uh, some of Peter's and my work uh, in working along with Robin Schaufler uh, uh, became uh, plasma fish sample in which we chose to use a uh, aquatic medium primarily inspired by Alan Kay's uh, discussion at SIGGRAPH that uh, he's tired of these glossy uh, movies that just look so real. Everybody's trying to synthesize reality. Why don't you do things that uh, computers can do that reality can't do? And why don't you show more vitality and, and dynamics in the imagery? And so we kind of picked up on Anne Marion's uh, theme of the, uh, the aquarium or the, the, uh, the fish interaction. How do you use that great technology in an art form? Uh, it gives you um, very easy manipulation of three-dimensional objects. They end up 2D on the screen, but you can think of them as an artist. You're thinking 3D, you're describing things in three dimensions, you're telling them to move around through a world. We have a 20 by 20 foot room. We say to the computer, here's a 20 by 20 foot room. Here's some things in it. This is what we want to have. Let's move around. Uh, what we put into the room is a bunch of software that knows about little tiny sort of elemental flakes. In fact, in the program they're called flakes. And each flake has some whiskers on it. And the whiskers are kind of like cat whiskers. They reach out and touch other flakes. Well, if they touch other flakes, then those two flakes know about each other because they've got whiskers touching and they can pull on each other or push each other away or send some messages across. So that's, that's sort of the, the, the building block that we're working with are these flakes and these whiskers that carry information between the flakes that get close enough to each other. The flakes, and a given flake is trying to be a leaf in a windstorm and it's sort of flittering around or it's trying to be um, a piece of a magic carpet sort of gliding through the air. Uh, but what if the magic carpet flake comes over next to the leaf storm flake? Well, then what we have to do as artists is figure out what's supposed to happen then. And uh, sometimes if there's more carpet flakes around, it'll pick up that leaf storm flake and carry it away. But if the carpet's kind of dangling on the end, it's from the edge piece, maybe it'll fall off and become a leaf storm flake. And sort of that interplay back and forth between pieces is interesting. Okay, so the real realization of plasm is getting it off of a little screen on someone's desk somewhere, which is kind of where interactive computer graphics has been sitting an awful lot, kind of tied to the wall, and to get it out there on the dance floor and uh, let people really use it as an exploratory medium and something that's a little, a little more uh, involving. So here's a prototype of Lumberjack One. This is our uh, wheel around uh, monitor stand. You're going to have two of these in the space uh, by the time we put the piece together. And essentially the idea is you have a handlebar out in front that allows you to maneuver the monitor around tracking the display, using it to explore. So essentially you end up with a bunch of people very intently watching their televisions, kind of a tango. Is that mixing my metaphor with a waltz? 
and the long umbilical cord allows them to make a free exploration. So one of the real uh, art qualities of the piece is that you'll look into this space and you'll see a bunch of people kind of manipulating these monitors around. What's the joke? And you kind of want to come in and say, well, excuse me, and oh, wait a minute, what is that over there anyway? So that uh, hopefully will have a nice human dimension of the piece then as people uh, stumble over the monitor. <laughs>